Okay, maybe this will work more effectively. Although it's really fucking annoying. Uh, I reformatted my computer and got all my hard drive set up, so this quality should be better for you, I hope. Um, I think I have everything sorted out. I just literally recorded this and uh, had the wrong audio settings in, so it sounded like I was in a wind tunnel, which I don't think I could do intentionally. Um, it's one of those things. It's just, if I wanted to do it, because it actually sounded kind of cool, I couldn't do it if I tried, but it's whatever. Anyway, uh, this is going to be the 5.2 other classes, and I'm just going to touch on some of the stuff I know. I'm not going to try to read all of them off again, uh, because you could just go read them yourself. You don't need me to do it all for you. Um, I'm just going to talk about a few things that I know. Uh, first up, before I go, Merry Christmas, and I actually agree with a lot of the changes. Um, they're in the right direction. I don't know if I 100% agree exactly how they're doing them, but it's definitely changes like uh, sometimes you see changes and you're like that just should never have been done like increasing warrior damage and taking away intercept that just should have not been a change ever um, that's just not how you balance this game uh, but these all look like in the right direction so even if I say they're bad or I don't like them they are still far better than what Blizzard has ever done in the past and it's actually like looking as an improvement anyway Death Siphon now heals for 50% of, or 150% of the damage dealt was 100. That's a pretty nice buff because it is a sustained damage, just sort of turret off heals. Uh, I don't know if it's enough to make it viable, and if it is, I might play DK again. Uh, adding the range portion again does look kind of fun, but without it, I just don't know if I would do it. Um, conversion now costs 5 ruin power instead of 10. Uh, so it got buffed by theoretically 50%, although at the point where you turn on conversion you don't really care how much room power it costs you want it for the healing. Uh, so It's a nice change, you can sustain a little bit more if you have a good amount of ruin power, but other than that it's not the biggest buff, and I believe you give up Lichborn for conversion. I think. No, you give up that for AMZ and Purgatory. Never mind. Um, nice change. Uh, your Bloodworms have 100% more health. Fuck yeah. Uh, Reaping, which turns your shit into Death Ruins, now applies on Icy Touch, which is good utility for the purges, and once again, adds some of the damage increase for kiting back into the game, which is what made DKs really fun and why I had fun playing them in the first place, even though I stuck around with that class too long when it stopped being fun. Um, as dumb as it's going to sound, Season 5 playstyle with Shadow Frost was the most fun, even though the way they nerfed it was by removing the entire spec in that playstyle. So, you really lost that, and adding that range sort of utility kind of thing to it may be fun again. Granted, anyone who says Season 5 DKs were balanced is retarded as fuck because they were OP as shit. I don't think the spec needed to be completely removed. Anyway, there are some, there are two huge buffs for DKs. First is summon gargoyle costs no ruin power, which in itself sounds like a death coil's worth of damage. It's really a lot more than that. You don't randomly lose uh, the damage, you had to be ready for summoning Gargoyle. It was a very situational thing because you would lose a lot of damage for it. Um, right now I'm assuming you have to stack all of your blood tap charges and have on use and a spare chunk of ruin power and have let your ruins regen naturally for it to be at full effectiveness so you don't lose your, like, your Scourge Strike or Necrotic Strike uptime with it. Um, it's a nice change. It's a lot more than people will expect when they read that change. The scary one is it now deals shatter and nature damage, which if that scales off your mastery, holy fuck, Gargoyle just does 40% more damage now. Um, he's always really going to hurt. You may actually have to kill it. Um, and Evan Plaguebringer now causes Play Strike to inflict Frost Fever. That's just a good quality of life change. It is really annoying to have to save Outbreak for the uh, one GCD double disease as opposed to using two separate GCDs and then potentially have to save it for the range disease when you need it there too so overall I like that um, you can just casually apply both of them now and it takes off a little bit of the PvP festering strike if you're frost um, good changes overall it if they're enough I might play DK again even if they're still bad because they look like they're fun but if Death Siphon just does no damage still um, and the gargoyle change just makes your gargoyle solo people instead of you actually doing anything while you run away probably not going to pick it up again, but maybe. Um, big one for druids is Cyclone, and now has a 30 second cooldown with Ferals. That's huge. Um, 
I don't know why people didn't do it extensively beforehand. Maybe there's just not that many ferals and they do do it, but when I watch Lushies or Yips play, it's just use your instant cyclone to set up another cyclone on whoever you want, to set up a cyclone on the third person so you got the initial guy's cooldowns off. Um, it's just you can do ridiculous things with those cyclones. Um, 30 seconds may be too much, but you could do some fucking retarded shit with cyclones. Uh, it's also on DR with Polymorph now, which they listed everything on it, so everyone's all panicking over how bad it is. It's on Poly DR. It's not that bad. You know, maybe Shadow Priest, Feral, Druid, something is the best comp you could run now. But it's just on Poly DR. It's not too huge of a change. Like Shadow Priest, Feral, Druid, Shaman. If your Shaman doesn't hex, you're never going to notice that it's DRing. Um, except, I guess, with itself a little bit. No, you wouldn't even notice that. I guess. No, there's nothing else that does that. Yeah, you wouldn't even notice it. Uh, Shattering Blow also got a 1.5 second cast time, so Kitty Cleave's not as scary if you're a Paladin or a Mage. Because that was fucking stupid. Oh, one more. Displacer Beast. I disagree with this. But, like I said, with all these patch notes, it's actually a good change. Even though I disagree with it. What I would want change would be, it grays out your focus. You can't do anything to it. But it keeps your focus, so you don't have to keep fucking resetting it. Because that's really annoying. And it drives me insane. Um, but they no longer stealth, so you can't use it for extra pounces. And it increases your run speed. It's a good change. I still would have much preferred the not dropping the focus. And just have that universally applied. If mirror image grays out for a second, and then... You know, you could either manually reapply it and catch him again, or once that initial one or two seconds of GCD is over for it, you get your focus back, uh, which just be so much easier. Dropping focus is just sort of annoying. Fighting the UI should never be a thing. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, theoretically, you could macro a bunch of your abilities to slash focus last focus or something, and macro it into a bunch of abilities and then manually set your focus and constantly have that being spammed. Which makes it, you're fighting UI, not actually fighting the players. Which is just really stupid. Um, but, whatever. Other than that, great changes. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something on Druids. Oh, Typhoon got a second nerf. Uh, hunters. BM may be activated when there's no line of sight of the Hunter pet. It's not a huge deal. But, if it was currently bugging out, like the old Dark Transformation bug, where you would lose all of your stacks, your pet wouldn't enrage if it was line of sight, and you would just be SOL. Good change. Um, if it doesn't work like that, eh. I don't know. Anyway. On, speaking of hunters. That's, the reason I don't agree with that. Is because I think the trinketing CC portion of Beast Within should be on a one minute cooldown. Or something. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Because having to know between your one minute ICD versus using your on use trinket would be really stupid. Especially if you're at like 55 seconds. And you think you can BM it. And then waste your BM or waste your trinket when you can be him. It's just sort of like... That's just an irritating mechanic to fight. Once again, you're fighting the game, not fighting players. Um, but something like that would have been a much better change, in my opinion, because as a monk, I stun Honor and his pet if he BMs the opener. He trinkets it, I sap him, he BMs again. It's just like, oh my god, I hate this class. Um, and then they kill you in the opener. Sonsing Shot now goes up four seconds. Technically, that's a buff, because most of the hunters who are bad don't realize that how DR works at its 14 to 18 second DR cooldown ish will occasionally DR your own silencing shot so you had to hold it for one or two seconds to make sure um, but it was almost never DR would actually it's not too big of a deal but gut hunters it's just sort of like oh I got a four second nerf damn or really like a two second nerf because you held it um, binding and weaver and have no focus cost which is nice utility um, ups that a little bit but nothing major, and then they get like healing for disengage, which is nice because Chimera shots awful and BMs don't really heal for much outside of Stampede if they have Spirit Beasts. Uh, mages, they have some tricky shit, and I'm not 100% sure on what it all means. I think they get 15% damage if you fully cast an Evo or something. It says like a huge formally thing and all of that. Biggest issues. Mirror images apparently do more damage, which is annoying because they already just spam slows on you. It's just gay that that actually has the utility function of Frostbolt, but whatever. Um, improved Counterspell, Blanket CS from Fellhunters. Uh, 
a lot of those have been removed, which is semi a good change. It's kind of, I think, in favor of some healers over others. But overall, I am not too worried about it. Let's see. Frostbolt deals 25% more damage and no longer increases subsequent Frostbolt damage. I think that's to make up for the Frostbomb nerf now, or just something. I'm not 100% sure of what all of these mean. I don't play a mage that much. Um, and a lot of their like talent names have changed since Wrath were some of, or since Kata and Wrath, I guess. Uh, where I actually kind of knew where everything was going on. I haven't caught up that much. I don't have ATR to play on and just play every class and figure it all out. So, I'm sorry I don't know mages as well as I should. I'll talk to someone. Um, but overall, I think they're okay strong. I think they're still going to be relatively weak, though, um, as they are now. And that's with the Frostbomb nerf. Uh, but, there's a good change in here. Freeze no longer does damage won't break your own polymorph if you slightly miss. Uh, let's see. Pallies didn't really get much. Um, that's actually kind of sad because I don't know if they're in a, if they're in the same place as monks where they're actually pretty good. They're just not feral druids, warriors, or hunters right now. Um, or if they're actually bad. So the lack of buffs there kind of is disheartening. But maybe a rep pally out there can tell me. Um, Priest's holy fire thing changed so the powered solace might actually be worth taking. Uh, I'm not sure on that. Dominate mind, which you give up siphon for, you'll probably never see as a slightly reduced cooldown. Siphon's just too strong. Um, Angelic Feather is like a 10 second cooldown and has a 6 second duration now. Granted, you give up Fading Out of Roots. That's still a really powerful sprint if it's not like a permanently slow U team. Um, and Body of Soul got a little bit of a duration nerf. Uh, oh, and they're getting a little bit more mana efficiency, I think. Uh, it says it doesn't scale off temporary spirit buffs now, which I'm not quite sure what that means. Like, for example, Old Tsunami was permanently up if you kept casting spells. Is that a temporary spirit buff, or is it pretty much permanent, because it's always up? Um, things like that sort of change whether or not it's a buff or a nerf, but overall I think it's going to be a buff, because it's a 50% mana increase from spirit. Uh, Rogue's got a bunch of shit that actually makes them really scary. Preps baseline again. Well, I guess it wasn't baseline ever really, but preps baseline. Um, they changed something. Burst of speed. Now actually works as intended. Or maybe not as intended, but it gets you out of roots and still sprints you like mine does. As opposed to separate things. Sorry. When they were separate things, that's just stupid. I'm sorry. Especially with its energy cost being 60. That's just really dumb. Um, but whatever. That's a good change. Anyway. Um, they get Cloak and Dagger, which is a 30 yard range, and then Shadow Steps to people. Which is potentially really strong for sub when you're dancing or an opener team where you could shadow step cheap shot someone which you don't actually have to use shadow step for and then go for a Garrett like on a mage and you'll just shadow step back during your dance gives you like huge mobility during your dance but other than that you give up uh, like actual shadow step so you can't really shadow step kick or um, do any of that stuff so it's sort of a trade off it's actually a cool looking ability um, but I don't know if it'll be amazing uh, shuriken toss. Someone said you auto attack at like a 30 yard range or something. I'm not 100% sure. The tooltip's really weird. That's what I was told. It's kind of cool if it does. Um, nerf strike. Uh, I didn't actually know what this did until I read, read it while I was doing a wind tunnel this exact video. But by the way, I turned into a raid boss here and it's fucking hysterical. Uh, it may scale like a double mortal strike and you have a 50 strike of percent effect for a couple seconds outside of a cheap shot on the healer, which would be really scary. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure quite how it's going to work, so I can't really judge on it. But if they stack additively, because they're two separate types of debuffs, which I think they will, like, uh, it's not taste for blood. It was just overpower. Relentless strikes, I think, maybe? Whatever that was for Warriors and Wrath. They could double MS, and it was scary as shit. Granted, it was 50 to 75 then, as opposed to 25 to... I guess those did DR even though they're separate abilities, so I guess it would be 25, maybe 35% healing reduction. Granted, it's also really scary because you come out of a cheap shot, so if you cheap shot for CC, take a bunch of damage, don't die, NS then heals for 25% less. Um, interesting ability. 
I'm not quite sure how it's going to scale. It could be out of control. It could just do nothing. Uh, shadow focus. I don't know what that does. Okay. They're four pieced. This is huge, and like the gargoyle one for DKs, people are going to like pass it off as nothing, but it's actually fucking huge. You gain 50 energy max instead of 10. Now, it doesn't sound like much until you think of it this way. A rogue dances with full energy. He pulled it, he vanished, he did whatever. He has full energy. He just gained two extra ambushes compared to what he had, whatever it was, pre-5.2. That's a lot more damage than people seem to expect. Granted, it's almost entirely for burst and entirely for PvP, but it is a lot of a change. Um, so it's kind of scary. Hold on, I have to sneeze. Okay. Sorry, I don't want to murder your ears. Um, all their teammates, when someone's kidney, go up by like 4% damage from something vain. Sing sanguary vein. That. A little bit of a buff. Uh, Blood Fear got destroyed, and I don't see anything in here that changes how much damage Warlocks do, other than Grimoire of Sacrifice. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. It looks like there's some Burning Ember changes. If there's a lock in here, tell me what they do. I haven't kept up with how locks do either, since all of the, basically, a lot of the things do the same thing, they just change names. So, it's just sort of like, ugh. And then, let's get to Warriors. Shockwave now is a 40 second cooldown, was 20. Dumb change. Good change technically, but I think it's a dumb change. Uh, striking three or more targets will reduce it to 20 seconds. Okay versus some stuff, like a stampede. You're going to have a 20 second cooldown if there's a stampede. Um, or wild imps. Or a water elemental and a fell puppy. You know, you could easily hit three people if those are near you. Uh, so I hope it only works off players and then it is a nerf, even though I think it's the wrong way. And I'll explain why it's the wrong way, because warriors are a hot topic right now for being really fucking stupid. Um, Shockwave itself, I don't see as the issue. There's plenty of abilities near Shockwave's level, like Gouge plus a Cheap Shot, or Fist of Fury, even though it's a longer, slightly longer cooldown, and can be parried and dodged randomly, when Fist of Fury can't. Granted, it does restun you a million times. Um, there's just a lot of utilities like that, like Ring of Frost, Palm Ring of Frost, Alter Time Poly, just... I don't think it's the issue, it's just that big shockwave. I think the issue is having defensive stance, being able to run behind a pillar and hit a bunch of people where if you come in and peel, when you were formerly in a safe spot and it's just the warrior hero leaped a mile away and then charged you, uh, you can't really come to peel him because you're all going to get shockwaved and you can't really swap to him with any damage out in the open because of defensive stance and it just allows him to overextend. I think the issue is the lack of viability as a target to where they're allowed to overextend into a situation like that where I will die in a shockwave before he will die in a deep when I'm playing monk, mage, or something like that. Um, it's just sort of iffy. Anyway, uh, I have to go to two matches now because uh, it went too long. Um, Roarbringer now slows by 8 seconds for PvP. I hope they put it stone on DR. I really do. It's just really stupid to go charge shockwave and be stunned for seven seconds or possibly eight um, if they just overlap it correctly uh, especially if they interrupt something because the issue is colossus smash being just on it's it's stronger than on use trinket pretty much and it's a 20 second cooldown so every colossus smash followed by mortal strike overpower slam is a big chunk of damage and doing it in warbringer shockwave if you proc it in warbringer shockwave every 20 seconds you can do 80% of someone's health outside of cooldowns. Um, and it's just terrifying. It's really, really just out of control. Uh, just because of the strength of the way that abilities work, because it's not base armor pin now. Almost speaking, if they had old armor pin back, it'd be a little bit better, at least right now, because they wouldn't have that level of armor pin, and it wouldn't be so randomly bursty. They may be able to lower damage because they have such a high m armor pin base. Um, just the way that ability works out, it's just really tricky to balance. Because it is just a 20 second cooldown that's on par or better than on use. Um, there's some change over Taste for Blood being redesigned. It now causes the Warriors to gain two stacks of overpower. I think it still has an increased crit chance, up to five stacks when Mortal Strike deals damage or something. They don't actually say what it does. Um, obviously, they're trying to change it. And if you just get to turret off overpowers, there's a problem. Because 
because that's scary as fuck. You just stack over powers and then pop your cooldowns and everything dies. Um, but it does look like they're addressing the issue with that, and they're just taking it out because it's a clunky mechanic to deal with. Um, especially when Colossus Smash, Mortal Strike, Overpower, Slam, whatever, is such a smooth rotation and you don't want to have to deal with clunky uh, heroic strike mechanics. Um, Elemental, or Shaman's got a little bit of some buffs. Mostly speaking, Blanket CS made Resto Shamans not probably get raped anymore. Like, Monks, Rogues, Shadow Priests are the ones with Blanket Silences still. DKs, although there's the longest cooldown. Um, Elemental Masters, one minute cooldown. Gretz, Ellie Shamans everywhere. Uh, Shamanist Rage is now available to Elemental. Gretz, Ellie Shamans everywhere. Now you can feel our pain of having a 20% damage reduction ability and watching it do nothing as you still die. Uh, I don't know what that ability does, but apparently it scales with Healing Rain. So, uh, them boxes on Dalaran, where you just throw a Healing Rain down behind them. Maybe a buff to Dalaran Arena. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Ancestral Swiftness gives you 10% melee haste, which is actually useful. Uh, attack speed is more or less not useful. It's okay for monks, but it's, it's literally just right-click speed as opposed to energy regen, etc. Um, so it's a pretty good change, although it's not much. Stone Bulwark, I think you give up something really good for that, but it's been buffed. Um, I don't know what you give up for it, but yeah, it got buffed. Let's see. Elemental Blast now has a chance to increase the caster's agility for Elemental Shaman, so they won't be lightning bolting, which is actually just sort of... In terms of how cool Elemental Shaman animations are, especially with, like, Ascendance, shooting out one lightning bolt's kind of depressing looking, which is kind of cool. You can shoot the big fiery thing and get some damage for it, maybe. Um, but other than that, that's about it. Uh, like I said... I disagree with some of these, but I agree with what they're trying to accomplish with them. Whether or not they're 100% the correct way is up for debate. Um, but overall, good looking changes. And I'm sorry. Oh my god. No, I made it to the second arena match. Okay. Well, I'm going to go find a song because this match actually is really long. And it's actually a good twos match, so I don't want to like not use it. Um, and welcome to how retarded warriors are. This guy's actually somewhat decent, even though I refuse to admit it because he's a warrior and I still see mistakes. And playing a warrior before, I know exactly how they should be played, and it's just sort of like, eh. I see some dumb things, but it's whatever. Warriors are just out of control right now. You don't actually have to play intelligently, even if you are an intelligent warrior. Like you could be a really good player. Example, Vive. Vive is actually a good warrior. He just refuses to play like it because he can. Um, so. I don't know. I'll go find a song or something. And uh, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas and stuff. Happy holidays. Happy 2055th Jesus' birthday. What's politically correct? Happy Hanukkah? Kwanzaa? I don't even know what religion that is. I think it's a thing, though. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to go before someone gets mad at me for skipping their holiday or whatever. I'm cutting it now. I'm not going to Google everything that goes on during the holiday season. Fuck this.
Thank you.